Hey, welcome everybody. We're going to have an all Skype show this week. We're heading down south to a hit maker whose information you absolutely want to have. ITL's coming up. Corner office with Drew. Let's roll Pensado's place. Hey, everybody. Good, good to have you back. We, we, uh, we've got a really, really, really special show for you today. Uh, thanks for all the comments on Bruce and Mike Dean and all the other shows. Cool. Uh, we, we've had a good run of shows lately, and I think, uh, I think today's going to could be one of the best ones. Her Phil is uh, just a great person, a great human being. He's uh, so gifted. Phil Tan's on our show today. Prolific. Uh, oh, thanks, Zan, for the... Coif, right, Zan. The Coiffure recommendation. <laughs> I'm not sure you can tell a different Zan, but I know the effort. And I don't know. Our audience. I go fix it and it still looks the same. I don't know. Oh, that's but uh, anyway, uh, 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 a person that, that I've, I've respected for quite a while, Charles Dye, is going to be with us. Charles is. Uh, is he in a batter's box? Is that what he's Yeah, he's doing? in batter's box. Oh, cool. He does. He does um, Every just every kind of music. He's really gifted. He, he cool. has some ser seminars and books and things, and cool. we're gonna, we're going to talk to him about that. He'll be with us later on, and of course, uh, Drew's here. Yeah. So we get a little. We get that. Well, I do, well, I do a little homework. <laughs> oh, this is from Zan. Dave, I would go to another room and fix your hair again. Son mm. of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, it ain't gonna happen, Zan. While Dave is debating about fixing his hair or not, and by the way, he's already fixed it once, so <laughs> this would be the remix. Um, you, know, I, you know our normal ho uh, homework stuff. Um, please hit us up at Twitter, on our Twitter handle, which is at Pensado's Place, and you know, email Dave or myself uh, or Drew at Pensado's Place this week in dot com. Um, our Facebook page, our YouTube page, you see it up on the screen. Um, Always our corner office, which is powered by Ustream, manned by our man, Drew. What's going on, everybody? Cool. And then uh, just a quick shout-out to our off-camera um, stylist, Zan, who's keeping track of <laughs> Oh, it's Ice Cube. Uh, He's doing Barbershop 7, the salon, and asked me to be in it. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. So, so you just oh, isn't that great? Uh, nice, Dave. So anyways, the business at hand this week, Dave. Oh, you know what? Um... Um, I love talking to you guys. I love I love uh, uh, the, the the presence on Facebook. Uh, Pensada students, incredible. Uh, I wish I had time to listen to every one of your mixes, but um, I don't. So uh, I don't know how to solve that problem. I'm not going to say stop sending them. Keep sending them. Maybe I'll get a chance. But right now. With my mixing schedule and the in the show, it, it's it's really really difficult. And then also, remember this: Herb, you and I were talking on the car on the way over here today. Pensada's place is not an episode a week; it's an episode till this ain't fun no more. It's one long ass episode, but you get it in weekly increments. Mm -hmm. So so, in order to get the most from this show, you don't just watch it. This isn't grade school where if you kind of fake it and listen to the teacher, you can learn something. You're going to have to go back and really immerse yourself in, the, in all the episodes, all of the, uh, all the ITLs, even the interviews. The ITLs and the interviews are connected in a weird way because the, the, the interviews tell you uh, what to do, and the ITLs tend to tell you how to do it. Now, this week, the show is a big ITL because Phil Tan is he's one of the most generous people with his knowledge and experience that, that, that we will ever have on the show. So the show's going to be an ITL, and we're, we're, we're going to make ITL a little more of a, a, an equipment review today. So well, let's, let's get to it. Want to roll? Let's do it. ITL. Hit it, Will. Mark, man, thanks for coming by today. I, uh, uh, I got a singer come by in a minute, but uh, this might be a good opportunity for us to uh, put some of the stuff through its paces, because uh, I really appreciate you loaning me this. But what I was impressed by was the the the, the effort and the and the torture you're putting yourself through to source original parts. And when we say original, I don't mean kind of sorta. I mean you've actually spent a large amount of time getting uh, 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 the, the exact same parts, not mm -hmm. reproductions, but the exact same parts. And from everything I'm hearing, it's paying off because people are saying that. Uh, 
that the product is is exactly what they expect it to be, you know? Well, Only better in some ways, right? Exactly. I mean, we do. Most of the parts come from England. The Transformers uh, come from Carnhill, which used to be called St. Ives. Mm -hmm. uh, something a lot of people overlook is the actual wire, which, again, the original company was uh, Camford in the north of England, which, again, we, we sourced, and uh, we have it shipped over, because the looming of the wire has capacitance, as you know, and you know, therefore, mm -hmm. getting that down was was a problem. You can't, you can't do it with a printed circuit board. The modern techniques no, won't I mean, work. No, I mean you can do it, but it's not the same, and that's where people, you know, a lot of people don't realize in, in manufacturing. There's plenty of corners you can cut to make a profit, and therefore we don't. I mean, there's a few companies do it. We stand alone because we we do hand wire it. I tried I tried your 1073s out, and I got to tell you, they were everything I expected and more. Um, I have I have the originals and uh, uh, I tried to I, I tried to avoid doing an AB because I, I felt like I don't really care what the old ones sound like if the new ones sound great that's good right. enough for me but they sounded so good I wanted to see uh, and test my ability to remember what the uh, originals sounded like and I'm telling you uh, I, uh, am I am I wrong? They sound the same, right? Well, it is the same. It's Again, the same it's, part. It's as if we went back in time because the the, the original company, Neve, you know, they purchased the transformers, the wire from from other people. They didn't build it themselves, so therefore we can we can buy it from the same people, which which is exactly what mm -hmm. we do. And because we hand wire it the same way, then yeah, it's going to sound the same. The only benefit of today's components, not talking about the transformers or the switches or the wire. The things like transistors, resistors, and caps have a better tolerance nowadays. So when you do select a frequency, then you bang on that frequency. Whereas, you know, a 30-year-old module that has plus and minus 20% tolerance, you may be off slightly, and therefore it's hard to match a pair up. You know, mm -hmm. you can buy one from us today. Well, two plus a, a, a shift in capacitor uh, creates uh, phase problems, too. Also that, but I'm just saying, though, that the... The tolerance that we, the parts that we use with a two percent tolerance, you can buy, you know, can buy this today, buy another one in six months, and it'll be bang on stereo. There's, there's not a, you know, there's not an issue that we, we have to, you know, test it in a certain way. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just better. In the early days of BAE, I, I, I had my first product from you guys, probably in '89, and uh, it was called Brent Averill Electronics back then. And man, uh, the, the reputation that your company uh, got very quickly was for, for, for meticulous quality. Mm -hmm. I mean, most people will go out and just use a good quality solder, but you guys were going out and using s silver yeah. solder, which is actually real silver. At, at, what's silver now, Stero? $825 an ounce now or something? <laughs> um, and, and little things like that. And man, my, my, my API modules that I, that I had you guys do are just as sweet and fresh today. Mm -hmm. and useful as they were back then, that same quality that you were known for combined with with Rupert Neve's original designs, mm -hmm. with that quality applied, it's just an incredible product. I mean, these well, things are going to be valuable for 30 years, right? Absolutely. And just touching on what you said, um, you know, the genesis of the company, Brent Averill was an actual person, and he, his genius was racking the vintage gear. Because back, back then in the 80s, you know, the, we were sold digital and this and that. Uh, but he recognized that the analog stuff still still sounded great. So he started the company that way, but when I took over the company, there was a lot of improvements that, that needed to be done and a lot more design, which of which one of our head designers, don't tell anyone, is Abidus Kavedjian, because he, mm -hmm. he doesn't like any press. Okay. But uh, we work hand in hand um, doing things like this, which is the 1073 Mic Pre, mm -hmm. but it's a portable unit. It's just the Mic Pre version of mm -hmm. it. So yeah, we, we took Brent's philosophy we applied it to today and, you know, just check the website for the, for the catalog. A minute ago, my friend Jason Joshua walked in. Jason also has a room here. And uh, we were discussing with you that you can, you can get that Neve sound if you're using a 1073 module but not actually engaging the EQ. Yeah. Even if you are engaging the EQ but you're not really using any EQ, there's no need for you to purchase the entire module. Mm -hmm. But you can purchase the, the the 1073 MP or this particular unit, and you get the exact same coloration yeah. 
Plus, you've got a, a $3,000 mic pre, stereo pair of mic pre's right there, right? Absolutely. The beauty of coming in today, I can actually show you that we, um, we have evolved, and this now is a two-channel 10 semi mic pre. It says MP, that's you know, what it stands for. So, yeah, you're getting the same sound, same transformers, same everything that's in the, uh, the old modules, but it's just a mic pre version. But the beauty of this, it has a balance line input as well, so you can put the final mix through. Not only is it great mic pre, but it's great for a saturation device. Mm -hmm. If you want to colour that, uh, oh. you know, that sound a little bit more, you can go through it. For, for this, there's, there's some kids that, that are listening to this that might not understand what you get in terms of saturation by putting across the stereo bus. D describe the, what, in, in, in descriptive terms, it's hard to describe sound, but, when you, but what people love about the original Neves was... What, what in electronics we call saturation and in recording we call saturation in, in layman's terms, it just sounded really damn good. Yeah, technically it's harmonic distortion. It, it's distortion that's pleasing to our ears. Even, uh, even, even order distortion, correct? Yeah, it's, um, it's just the actual transformer was, was actually a mistake. That's something we can go into at a later stage. Oh, um, can we go into it now? You know, well, uh, let's do it now. Rupert, like back in that. the day, you know, made this transformer. And we didn't have the, the analyzers that we do nowadays. So, of course, like, much like we do, we, we hand it engineers like yourself. And we say, how do you like that? So he did this and realized that there was some technical mistake. But again, in audio, there's no rules, really. It's what, what's what pleasing to the good. ears. So he said, no, give it me back. We'll, I'll redesign it. And they went, are you crazy? This sounds great. So it's that, that's the essence of, um, of these mic pre's. Did they that hook class it up to like sound. the wrong pole or something? Well, the windings, there's, there's something within the windings. So I don't know exactly what it was, but that's pretty you know, essentially that's Is what that it was. Is that common knowledge? Or? No, but again, it, a, lot of, uh, a lot of things that's been written about this, someone gets a bit of information, and it's just all over the internet. But believe me, we, we know this circuit. We've been working with this circuit for the best part of 20 years. Wow. Um, you know, I'm from England. I know a lot of the history of the, uh, the original Neve, etc. Um, so, going back to the, the saturation, it's harmonic distortion. So, basically, it's all coloration, what people say about the Neve coloration. That, that's basically what it is. But, as you know, again, with consoles, it went through certain, it went through certain stages of either a 1272 or 1290 or one of the other amplifiers that shared this output stage and it gave you a bit more coloration each time. Sometimes, you know, it's a bit too much, but again, it's all about your own, in what, what pleases you. So you can go through it as many times as you want. Go through it once, see what color it adds, you know, put the mix through again, and, and, and so forth. But essentially, that's, uh, that's what you're gonna get as a byproduct of a killer micro. Is, is any component of the descriptive term saturation have to do with uh uh, like saturation on, with tape is is is, a, is almost a description of compression, tape mm -hmm. compression. Yeah. In 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 1073 electronics, is there any component of that of that word saturation that would imply somewhat compression? Absolutely. Really? And again, within the design of the amplifier, um, whereas one of the mic pre's we build is based on the old API 312, mm -hmm. it handles Great. transients very well. Yeah, they're great uh, on snares. I love them on snares. Yeah, we use Jensen transformers for that. But these transformers and the way it's integrated, integrated into the circuit of the um, amplifier, it does compress transients. So you're absolutely right on that. And that, in effect, is, is what the saturation is. So, okay. you know, that's where the color comes from. Yeah. The other thing with um, the, genesis of the, the genesis of the company, we built the 73 because no one else was building it. It, it was obsolete in, in 79. So we sourced the parts, we built it before anyone else. Um, at, you know, fr from when it was finished in 79, we, we were the first company to start building it. But I didn't want to just do that. I wanted to expand the, um, the circuit, and that's exactly what we did here. Um, I don't I know how technical you, you want to be, but you know, the, the, in, the inductors in here, they had separate taps that were, were never being used. So again, with the help of Avidus Electronics, um, we calculated the cues and you know, put the frequencies there. I mean, the, the switches, these are 1 by 12 switches, and we were only using six positions. 
And these um, are identical to the Rupert switches, right? These are Elmer, and again, it's very important to recognize that a switch is just not a switch, is, is just not a switch. There are switches. Oh, yeah. You know, again, Elmer switches are the best. We get it's these just, it, It's safe to say that any component in which the audio signal passes through can either make or break yeah. and contribute in a positive way or a negative way. These it's very rarely is a neutral way. These are gold-plated for, for the contact. I mean, it's, it's the best, you know, conductivity. But not only that, how tactile they are as oh. well. I mean, yeah, yeah, I've been sitting here the whole while you were talking. I, I yeah. mean, these I love. I mean, they're identical, but I mean, this, this is my unit. But I just love the way these feel. They actually, they just, they just, they just give you confidence when you turn Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Show, show us, uh, like you did with me uh, last week in, in, your, um, in your shop, show me how, how like, like I recognize this circuit, I recognize these, I recognize these, I recognize this. I mean, this okay. is the Carton Hill wire you described. This is the, I mean, uh, Camford wire. This is the uh, Carton Hill uh, transformer. Yep. Well, this is the mic transformer. This is the line, and this is the output. So, essentially, you know, you're going mic in through here, through the amplifier card to the output. That that's basically it. If you want to go through the EQ, it's the same thing, but you just use the 283 card, then through this card, and the cards below it. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason we build it like this is again, it, it's it's faithful to the old design. This is totally cross-compatible with vintage Neve stuff. You can take these cards out, put them in them, or just take the module out and, and, and put it in the console. Um, but it's just to show people we use Elmer switches. That's very important. I mean, these, these I don't want to just say because they're expensive, but they are. They, you know, we fly them in from Switzerland, and it makes a difference with the, the contact, and not only that, but just oh, the feel of them. So good. I wish you could feel these. And this one is from a place, I'm not even sure what I want to tell you, but it's from England. It, it's, it's a proprietary switch that, again, the original place got it from. So wow. not that many people are going to go out and buy it because, again, it's a very, very expensive very switch. Expensive. But I, I, I'm not going to give away, but, but most equalizers you buy, this, 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 and this, plus the labor to wire all this, just this costs more money than most equalizers. This is a very expensive uh, well, it's an expensive way to do it. That's why no one does it. You know, knowing the right mind would, would start a company and make something like this. I mean, there is a couple of companies out there that have done exactly that. They put it on a circuit board. Now, because of the sound, the design of the, um, of the amplifier, it does sound okay, but it won't sound like this because, again, the capacitance of the wire. Now, and, the, and the PC boards, and the soldering technique. And the, well, it's, yeah, again, it's the silver solder. But mm -hmm. real, um, this is really um, important for people to know when, when they buy this. Not only is it a killer sound, but it is an investment because, again, it's tangible parts. You can take these cards out and sell it on eBay. Not that you do that, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying these switches, everything in here, if it was stripped down, is worth money. Yeah, I know what you paid for this. I mean, well, there you go. And that's incredible. what I'm saying. It's... it's, it's it's going to be here, you're going to pass it on to your kids, or you're going to sell it when you retire. But it's not like, you know, some of the gear that will be obsolete in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. This will be here long after we've gone. Mark, I hate to put you on the spot, but I got a, I got a cheap bunch of bastards watching this show, and they, they want something free. Let me give that thing away. The 1073 DMP? Yeah. Sure, why not? Damn, that was easy. There you go. What about this? <laughs> <laughs> no, but just to let people know, I don't know if we, we touched on this. Again, not only is the, the, this the 1073 mic pre that's portable, he, we built this for Bootsy Collins. We, we put a, a Jensen DI transformer in here. So again, you know, if he liked it, I'm sure, not only for a bass player, I must guitar add, too. but guitar is great. A lot of people are, are, uh, are putting this, you know, through the paces live. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. yeah, I like DIs for synthesizers too. A stereo pair, and you're rocking. Good there looking. You. And this thing's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wait, yeah. T-shirts. Check this out. That's the new icon. That, Drew, you uh, got this one. Well, this is a little smaller than the one you got. Is that the one you got? Yeah. I like the blue one. Too. Well, you like the blue one? You wear it on the. Well, you wear it on the show this week. Absolutely. It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Our first winner. <laughs>
So, pretty cool thing, correct? Um, Man, I tell you what, I uh, apologize to my audience, they're not a bunch of, uh, <laughs> woo! Sometimes, I mean, that, the, you know, between Mike and I, we should be poster children for the drug, uh, anti-drug <laughs> program. Well, the, the cool part is that next week, we're going to have some details on the giveaway for our audience, and so they need to stay tuned for that. And we're putting together something pretty special there. Okay. And we're going to run the paces of that unit through with the incredible singer, right? Somebody oh, Estero. I love, love So Estero's it's going to be fun. really cool for people. I've got to mention this. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, we, 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 you know, because we are a green show, you mm -hmm. know. Absolutely. And <laughs> I want, normally I mention that no humans or animals were harmed in the making of ITL. Uh -huh. But our, our perfect record has been broken. It has. Hold your finger up, Drew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Drew has how many stitches, Drew? A four. He, so, gave, us, he so, gave us all for so, the show, didn't he? So Drew gave us all for the he show gave us all and for show. broke Welcome our everybody. perfect string of uh, no humans or animals wasn't, harm. Wasn't there a fader that went crazy and he died on it yeah, to protect yeah, you? No, and, no, it was, it was definitely oh my it was heroic. It was, it was very heroic. heroic of me. Incredible. Thank you. Incredible. I, I did the stitches myself, Herb. You ought to see them. I feel emotional. Yeah, I know. It's a sad moment. It was shoddy work, though. I mean, actually, uh, if you watch that segment, I, I, I was, you know, Drew dove for a t shirt, trying to get a free t shirt, and actually clipped his hand on the SSL. It was a mosh pit or something. Yeah. He went Man, Phil is going to kill us. He's been waiting so patiently. Yeah, we, we have to bring the credibility of the show back and bring Phil <laughs> yeah. in because we've lost we it completely. We need Phil's help desperately. Um, I guess it's a good time to introduce Phil, yeah, absolutely, right? Absolutely, bro. Well, Phil is my friend. Uh, Phil, uh, at one time, used to roam the halls of uh, a hallowed northeast Atlanta spot called Soundscape, which I actually helped build during my construction phase of my career. And um, Phil has won three Grammys. I mean, needs no explanation, needs no introduction. Just some of my favorite songs. I love S&M Rihanna. I love uh, all his Rihanna singles, which has just been just about every one. Uh, I, I I love what he did with the low end on Drop It Like It's Hot, Snoop and Pharrell. Mm -hmm. I'm a big Pharrell fan. And then um, just to show his versatility, he did Hollaback Girl, Gwen mm -hmm. Stefani, uh, Firework, Katy Perry, which is in, which is a, one of my favorite mixes. And another a mix we discussed on the show, Black and Yellow. Remember, we were trying to figure out who did it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know. Yeah. <clears throat> Phil did Black and Yellow. Oh, cool. And then uh, another mix I really liked that he did was uh, London Bridge, Fergie, the kick drum great, of that. Great mix. Uh, great mix. The vocals, everything. I mean, that, 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 that mix really, really helped catapult her career. So without further ado, Phil, are you ready to talk to us, my friend? Yes, sir. Phil, what's up? How are Good you to doing? see you. I recognize that room. Do you? Uh, no, I just made, I just made that up. <laughs> It looked like one that I, was, uh, I thought it was the one from the Sound on Sound interview picture, but then I realized the speakers are different. Uh, I moved in here last July. Oh, great. Good to see you, so my friend. Good. I was shocked when I read uh, that you had actually, because uh, we talk, you know, we talk all the time, but uh, I, I've forgotten that you'd walk through the wall, through the halls of Soundscape. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the hallway leading up to the main room and the upstairs. I would be doing cameo sessions and then, then quickly go change clothes and become a construction worker. And so I actually built a lot of that if my memory, I have to ask John Merritt if my memory serves correct. But, but man, thanks so much for being on the show. I was just uh, talking to Herb. Thanks for having me. Oh, no, my pleasure. I, I, I want our guests to go uh, type in Phil Tan on Wikipedia. Uh, 24, 26 singles, number one singles. Uh, a lot of people, you've been so quiet in terms of uh, uh, letting the world know what you've done. A lot of people don't realize just how much incredible work you've done recently. And, and, you, and uh, so everybody run, check out Wikipedia when you can. And it also tells you uh, a, a little, little bit about Phil. But um, you started in the box, what, two, early 2000 or 2000? Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd say... I think, I think the big turning point was um, the Clips album with um, Pharrell and Chad. So up until that point, most of the records that I've done kind of had um, specific stages, you know, recording and writing and maybe some editing and mixing. Mm -hmm. But with those guys, all of it kind of goes together. So 
I couldn't really work, you know, strictly analog anymore. So that was kind of what prompted me to, to, uh, to kind of dig deeper as far as the in the box thing. And then of course, after seeing Charles die and what he did with uh, Ricky Martin, I figured uh, I'd give it a shot. That was uh, La Vida Loca. Yes. Yeah, Charles is going to be on uh, uh, later on in the show. I can't wait. I got some really, really cool questions for him, too. You stated, uh, I love this quote by you, and I know what it means, and I, I'd like for you to expand on it to our audience. You said, I don't have the patience to figure out things that are complicated. And, man, I tell you what, uh, it, that really resonated with me because I, I, I'm the same way. It's like... Um, I just want to mix. I just want to be creative, and the things that slow down that process tend to be technical things that don't matter anyway. And uh, expound on that a little bit. Expand on it, please, Phil. I'm I'm an un uncomplicated guy. That's really that's really what it is. And uh, I think, you know, I think by nature I, I'm a little bit lazy. So uh, <laughs> you can't be lazy. You were a British Taekwondo champion. Um, no, but thank you. You might have mistaken me for some other Phil Tan. Oh, really? We'll but take credit for it anyway. You look like a Taekwondo champion. <laughs> but anyway, it's, um, I think what it is is that we, it got to a point where I started to get really busy. So it, I didn't really have a whole lot of time to, to try to figure things out. It just kind of, I had to dive in, you know, all the way head first and get into it. So, but it's, it's really, that's what it is. It's just, there's no, not enough time. Just like you said, you didn't have enough time to listen to everybody's mixes. Right. So I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to work all the time, so there's no time to do much else. Yeah, there's just some plugins too, and some, some like, like as engineers, we, if a piece of gear looks exceptionally ugly, it's, I just don't like to use it. If I've got to figure something out, I just don't want to use it. I mean, we do this for a living. If we've got to read the manual, it's designed wrong, you know? <laughs> uh, that's kind of what I kind of what it took from your sentence. Another thing that that I really love that you said um, is uh, it, if you did a mix on a different day, the mix would be different. Uh, a mix is the result of many decisions throughout the day. Man, amen to that. It, uh, uh, we were talking earlier about some some people want to watch the show and 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 be in your league after one episode, and it's just not going to happen. You know, it's 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 a process, isn't it, Phil? Yeah, you just got to be, you know, be yourself, be in your own league. So, and it's by nature what we do, it's never, it's never exactly the same. I mean, the same set of tracks, it was given to me and given to you, given to Charles, given to Drew. It all come up four different ways. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, it just depends on how, um, it, what's correct is really, there's no such thing as far as I'm concerned. So. Yeah, I I agree. Sometimes Drew can tell you. Sometimes I I I just get a new idea or a new piece of gear or something. I'll go back and do mixes of remix old mixes I mixed totally. a month ago just just for me, you know, just 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 because I got a new piece of gear or something. I was I was um, I was fascinated by your use of. Um, on uh, on the Rihanna mix of your use on the DSP analog channel across the stereo bus, um, as people that watch the show regularly know, I, I tend to be confused about the stereo bus. Uh, it's like this magical, mysterious place for me sometimes. Can can you take us through your thought process about when you select it and why you select it, and um, what 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 us less gifted people can listen for it because you don't just use the analog channel you've got a you sometimes you'll use the phoenix sometimes you use several you got three or four that you mentioned can yes. you can you just kind of get me up to speed on uh, I don't I don't need to know the settings but just what are you listening for because I've said a lot of times uh, warm is just another word for dull but but what are you trying to achieve when when you put that that across the stereo bus Okay, there's uh, several parts to this answer. Uh, first of all, the first 10 years or so of my career was almost exclusively analog. Uh -huh. So I was working on an SSL most of the time. And so I'm perfectly comfortable in that world. And I think because of that kind of foundation, if you would, that's kind of what I've 
been used to hearing. So I kind of want some sort of analogness in you know what I'm listening to. Mm -hmm. uh, the choice as far as analog channel, I don't use it as much as I do anymore. Uh, but in the earlier days, uh, there weren't as many saturation plugins as there are now. Mm -hmm. So there was maybe the Dewey. I don't mm -hmm. know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. That's what, that's what I say. DUI, the Spanish company. Right. The, the, the Dewey ones and the analog channel, and those really were the only ones that I knew about in the early days. Mm -hmm. And what got me using them was actually Charles. And um, wow. he should be speaking about this. So you might want to ask him about that later. Okay. So, and uh, he was the one that basically, you know, um, brought attention to that and uh, brought my attention to it. So that's mm -hmm. what I started using. Uh, as far as the stereo bus is concerned, I really, the, the, I don't really do a whole lot of, of stereo bus processing. Uh, and the re main reason I look at it is if the record label is is asking or hiring Bernie Grumman or Chris Geringer to master the record, then let them do their job. They have better equipment to do, you know, overall mm -hmm. processing than I do mm -hmm. uh, at my place. Mm -hmm. So now, having said that. A lot of times, um, you get rough mixes, obviously, that um, the, the recording engineers have put an L2 on or, or some sort of limiter to make it a little bit louder. So most of the time when you turn in a mix, you've got to at least be able to match that, uh, that level. So what I do usually is maybe a little EQ. Um, the SSL um, compressor is a favorite, and then maybe an L1 or L2 at the very end. And that's just for the client to li to listen to. Exactly. This. And you send like lately. I've been sending both to mastering the 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 version I give to the client, and then a version with nothing on the stereo bus. Are you doing that? Yes, I'm setting two versions. A little bit more work for us, but yes, I'm doing that. Oh, that's cool. And and like like if I heard you correctly, what you're trying to listen to and accomplish by adding a saturation plug-in on the stereo bus is to is to get an approximation of that comfort factor you got after you ran things through the, through an SSL, and by comfort, I, I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, I mean, you and I have been on SSLs for like years, and uh, that's the, that's our reference in our head, and and that that's what you're actually trying to do, right? Is create? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and and not just a reference um, as far as us working, but it's also growing up. A lot of the, well, all the music that I listened to growing up was was analog. Mm -hmm. Um, so most of the stuff, well, not all, most of it. Um, Brothers in Arms, I think, by Dire Straits was an all digital recording, but uh, and that was in the, the early '80s. So digital already had some foothold on the industry by mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. But um, most of the records were analog. So I think I'm trying to emulate what I'm listening to. Mm -hmm. uh, on on Facebook, uh, a gentleman named Quang, K W A N G, uh, was glowing about you being one of his uh, his heroes and someone he just really loves. So I took the time to write a, a, a couple of questions down from him out of respect for the fact that he 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 pretty much wrote a novel about you. Wow. But okay. He, well, Quang, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not being funny. I, I actually respect that. He um, he wanted to know um, if. Uh, on on S and M in particular, but I'm going to broaden the question a little bit. He sure. wanted to know if you used any parallel compression on the vocals or the drums or or synthesizers. Is, is parallel compression so, a technique that you that you find useful? It, um, yes, on certain types of records. So usually usually it's going to be a kick drum that triggers the uh, the the parallel compression for me, and I usually that gets fed to compressor on maybe the bass or a uh, pad mm -hmm. so a synth of some sort to, to give it that pumping so SNM not as much as say maybe um, only work only girl but mm -hmm. there's a little bit of it yes and um, um, outside the box I had no difficulty making things Wide. In other words, I, I, I was able to extend the. If, if, if we were facing our NS10s on the on the board, uh, normally the, the 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 width of the mix would be the limits of the of where the speakers were. But 
in the analog world, I could get me another foot, foot and a half on each side. In the box, um, I've had a little more trouble doing that. Um, I noticed that you like the, there again, the, the Dewey, uh, was it Red Spider? And then uh, is there anything else that you found? Uh, we did a series about the last eight weeks on uh, how to clear out the middle of your mix in an attempt to, and uh, next I want to show them how, to, once you get the middle a little clear, how you can use that to start as a foundation to make the mix a little wider. Uh, is there any other plugins that you found that you like for width? Or do you still go, go outboard for that? Um, no, actually, I, 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 use, um, I use the Waves S1 quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And Synalysis, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Oh, uh, I don't either, but I, I like their stuff. Yeah, they have one, they have a, like a stereo imager type of plugin as well. I use that quite a bit. That one has a, um, has a low pass, or I guess a high pass. So basically, the idea is certain below certain frequencies, it doesn't it doesn't do anything to it. So on the lower frequencies, like the bass and the and the kick, you usually don't want to widen that because that loses uh, the you know definition. Right. Kind of want to stick that in the middle. So maybe below 500 or so, you know, you leave those alone, and the rest you can try to find a good place for them. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn into a fan and not an interviewer. Uh, right now. No, that's, uh, that's my role. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I, I, um, I tortured myself for a, a good three weeks trying to get my kick drums to sound like, the, like what you did on um, Drop It Like It's Hot. Is there any memory that you have about that that you can help your old buddy Dave out with? They just call me and I'll send you the sample. <laughs> you got it. And, 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 and let me make it clear. Um, me only, not the other three million <laughs> trillion people of you. It's mine, 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 mine. Not Drew, not Herb, not you. Okay, thanks. I, I'll trade you. I got a little John kick that I'll trade you. That's my, one of my favorites in the world. Okay. Um, the Drop It Like It's Hot was actually a pretty, uh, pretty simple mix, actually. Because there's really not a whole lot of... Um, no, there's not a lot going on, but man, sometimes those are harder because you got everything carries so much weight. You have to make, you have to. Well, I, I, I know me, I can make anything hard, and uh, <laughs> even the less tracks seem to be seem to be harder. Well, the drop it like it's hot. I think, uh, if I remember correctly, because this is quite a while now. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Um, the kick there was um, was a tune kick drum because it actually plays a melody. So yeah. we kind of had to make sure that the ones in the higher registers still had the same kind of knock. Right. So I think Chad and I might have added an extra one for that purpose. Oh, okay. Um, but, you know, again, I think, see, I, I like records that are kind of wide open. They, they're harder to do because there's less space for things mm -hmm. to hide. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's also, it gives you a lot more freedom as far as to really you know, go for it. Yeah, on a, so. on, on a, on a more traditional record, uh, by traditional meaning a record with more instruments, um, when you get too much, it's hard to place the reverb, it's hard to find spots, sure. there's sure. not enough holes, right? Yeah, you, you're just trying to, you know, cut things out, compress things maybe that you don't want to, and just to find, try to find space mm -hmm. for everything. So it's, it's a little bit more difficult, but, you know, I, I like when things are uh, kind of open. What's, uh, what's the one question in, in all the interviews that you've done recently, that after the interview's over, what's the one question that you go, man, I wish they'd asked me that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Sorry. It's hard to, I don't, I don't really know. It's, uh, I think they cover the basis usually. The interviewers are pretty well prepared. So they, they've done their research. They come up and they say, hey, um, here, here's my list of questions, and go for it. Uh, sorry, so, sorry. I think uh, that was Herb. That was Herb. That was Herb's question. Herb was encouraging me to go a little Barbara Walters on you and try and try and do some in-depth investigative report. Herb, here. you got to talk Herb, to me, man. Don't look at me that way, Herb. They know I'm kidding. <laughs> Herb's in the head right now. Herb, you got to talk to me. You can't I will, Phil. get me on the show and just not talk to me. I'll, I'll, absolutely. Well, when when Dave runs into trouble. 
he, he throws to Herb, then all of a sudden... I, uh, I'm in trouble, Herb. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I, what I like about what Phil talks about is that um, when you have space, then I think the effect of what you guys do has a real chance to be heard. And even though the, the public doesn't know what they're hearing, there's just real science and art in there. When you talk about dropping like yeah. it's hot, yeah. that record for being so wide open was also had so much emotion to it. Yeah, I think I think Phil. Uh, w one of the things uh, I'll answer the question for him. One of the things he never gets to ask is, is um, Phil's records have a lot of musicality and a lot of emotion in them. Mm -hmm. I mean, like uh, I, I've mixed tracks by a lot of the people that he's worked with, and 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 he gets something in there that 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 relates to the average listener. But Phil, don't you don't you find that? since we're noticing the emotion in it, that you find a balance between the emotion and the bang, because your records also bang, too. Well, thank you. Um, I, you know, it's kind of hard to say, but I think a lot of times you, you, you have to let the music tell you what it needs. Mm -hmm. So if you, um, so sometimes th there's been mixes that I've done before uh, where I've kind of imposed my will, if you would, mm -hmm. and it, they don't turn out so well. So if you just sit back and listen to what it has to say, and just do what's necessary and not anything more, sometimes that's helpful. At this point in your career, are you still taking lots of direction from, from the various entities that will give you direction, the artist, the producer, the A&R guys, and so forth? Do you find it's still a balance, or are you left alone to do your thing? It's, um, the, making records these days, it's pretty democratic. You know, you've got yeah. songwriters, producers, artists, uh, label executives, sometimes several levels of them, and then sometimes if it's it's a single that's being remixed, then the radio people have something to say. Uh, sometimes mom and dad might have something to say. Yep. You just never. Know. <laughs> so you, my I think my role is just to try to make sure everybody's views are heard and at least you know the ideas are, are tried out. And uh, if they don't work, then at least everybody can hear that they didn't work. I so was. I was. And great. Uh, it's an interesting point you make. I was talking to um, actually a young intern at Larrabee Studios yesterday, and I was saying to him that a whole lot of times this space that you guys fill has this sort of hand holding, um, you know, oh, there's a, there's, there's a yeah, and, and all those different elements that have to be processed because it's almost the last intersection before commerce, mm -hmm. and everybody's got input there. And if you're not good at managing all those, having bedside manager, manage, bedside manners, and being able to manage all that information, you know, the, the great ones have to learn that. Well, like we were talking earlier about Drew's finger, Phil works in Georgia, so he, he's not possibly aware of this, but in California, once you have five number one singles, you're allowed to perform wedding ceremonies mm, mm, and mm. do marriage counseling. So that's where you've been. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I, I hear they're pushing for that legislation in Georgia, Phil, so yes. I know you're going to be at the forefront of that also. Hey, can, yeah. we bring in, uh, can we bring in some corner office folks and ask some questions? Let's do, let's do, let's do, let's do. Cool. Well, explain, to, explain, to, explain to Phil what we're doing. Yeah, hey, Phil, how you doing? This is true. Hey. Um, I'm going to be hitting you some questions from uh, the chat room. Facebook okay. and all that jazz. Um, actually, I wanted to get a quick question in, expanding sure. on Drop It Like It's Hot. Yes. The, the mouth click sound, uh, like yes. how did you, when you first heard that, like how did you approach that? Like, I know it kind of threw you off, so how did you, how did you want to get into that? That was, um, it was, I was happy to hear it actually, because it was so unusual. Yeah, yeah. Because at the time there was really no records quite like that. Right. So, um, I, I kind of treated it like it's a percussion, like a percussion loop, more so than more than anything else. Okay. So, at the, you know, I wanted to be real upfront, and I wanted to 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 make it feel like somebody's actually doing it in front of you. Yeah, that's big like, hook in that so, song. Big hook. Yeah, definitely. All, that whole song is full of hooks. Yeah, it is. Pharrell, Pharrell, is, that's his genius. Man, he just. Chad, Chad had a big, big part to do with that yeah, too. Yeah, Chad too. Uh, 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 Chad too. Exactly. Okay, so I got another question here from uh, Jeff Smith uh, off of uh, Facebook. Hey, Jeff. He would be, uh, he's w interested in to know the effect, oh, I'm sorry, the specifics of what Phil did to the vocals on Black and Yellow. I remember you breaking down the mix on one of the early shows, or that's to us, but we were talking about your mix of uh, Black and Yellow. Just everybody's kind of curious about your vocal tune. Okay. Um, actually, with Black and Yellow, 
I got to say this first and foremost, a lot of mixing, most of the important stuff is done actually before the mix. The songwriting, the recording, the production arrangement, and probably more importantly, the, uh, the performance, all that's the important stuff. So by the time it gets to me, if all that, all that stuff is good, then my job becomes really quite simple because the, the plan is pretty well laid out. So um, the engineers on, on this project, Mikael from Stargate and Miles Walker, they both did a fantastic job getting all this stuff together. So as far as the vocal is concerned, there might be, you know, I, if, if all goes right, I'm actually going to show you that particular session at one point, uh, a little bit down the road. This filmmaker named Jonathan Kagi came and shot me um, doing a mix. And he's, I think he's, he did something, he did a, a film with Charles that you'll meet a little bit later uh, called mix, mix It Like a Record. So, and Charles goes into great detail about how to process each and every single instrument. So what we're planning to do also is to give you kind of like a value added online component to to this film um, where I'm actually breaking down this this particular uh, song like track by track before and after etc so oh, wow that sounds great can I uh, can your old buddy get a uh, get a copy of that sure all right I sure. can't wait that's pretty cool but um, you know I'm, I'm gonna have to take a look at it but I'm guessing there's gonna be a DS in there somewhere um, excuse me, I got a little bit of allergies here. The SSL channel is probably in there. Um, channel strip, I think, is in there. That's one I use all the time. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> did, uh, did that, that vocal sounded a little bit dry, but not completely dry. Did you have like a, what did you have on it? No, there's a little bit of echo on there, and there's certain phrases or words that have been, um, that are being used for as throws for uh, yeah yeah we delays. talked about that. but the the delay you had was it like a like more like a slap like around 100 milliseconds or so the man that's actually that's a lot of stuff that's going on in that song so I mean um, on the vocal yeah there's there's actually quite a lot of stuff that goes on on the vocal oh, okay so in the background vocal there's got I'm guessing there's probably a chorus chorus slash flanger type of effect on the on the backgrounds and the hooks anyway um, the hook vocal is treated completely different in the verses of course mm -hmm. so yeah it's um delays reverbs choruses flangers it's all there <laughs> it's refreshing to see see somebody else not remember what they did yesterday besides me hey I you know, we're we're pretty lucky. We work on a lot of stuff all year long, so yeah, yeah I, it's hard for me to remember, recall specifics anymore. My friend Jason told me that that he heard or read or somewhere that when you're being creative, uh, it's a different part of the brain than the part of your brain that's used for memory. And when you're being creative, your, your brain is taken over by that process, and your memory takes a second uh, back seat. And that's why sometimes we don't remember things that we did during a creative moment. Sounds good, good anyway. I just, I'll buy it. I just thought I was getting older. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Phil, go, you can't more, be. A, a, you look like you're 20 still. Man, the gray hairs are in there. You just can't see them. Uh, I, I, I'm going to do an ITL pretty soon about how to dye your hair. I'll send you a copy. <laughs> <laughs> Last question, Drew. All right. Um, Real quick, uh, this is kind of like a two-part thing. Somebody's really curious about uh, internship possibility potential in Atlanta. Uh, if there's any info or anything you can give out about that? I, I don't have anything at my place. Our operation is really simple. It's really me and my assistant, Damian Lewis. Okay. And, um, Shout out to him. Yeah. So it's, it's really, that's really it for us. Okay. Um, if, if they're in the Atlanta area, check out some, some of the studios here. Um, Crawford is a big, they're mainly a post house, but there's audio that happens there. Um, our old buddy, Tom Kidd, I don't know oh. if he's over at Silent Sound. That's a fantastic place to learn. Yeah. Tom, I learned a lot from him. Me too. So, Me too. I'm glad uh, you said that because he was my assistant when I first started learning how to engineer. And he was better than I was, and he was so patient with me. I learned a lot from Tom. Great, great guy. Doppler is another place maybe you can yeah. take a look at. Doppler. 
In general, though, um, uh, I get, I get a, a lot of people asking me if they can be a fly on the wall or if they can work with me. Uh, because of the clientele that Phil and I work with, that's just not possible. Uh, it, 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 we, we just can't have that. But, but get, get yourself into a good school or either buy a Pro Tools rig. Watch the episode that we had with the, with the three assistants, my assistant, Manny's, and Jason's. And, and the, uh, the reason we chose those three guys was that was three completely distinctly different paths to success. So study that, and, and you'll get your question answered. But uh, uh, Will, have we got uh, have we got Charles on? Well, uh, yeah, we want to thank um, thank Phil. Oh, well, Phil's gonna stay with us during the. Uh, no. Oh, we couldn't do that. No. Oh, we're gonna let Phil go. Oh man, Phil, uh, can you come and do this again? I, I got. I got a hundred more questions here for you, Phil. Uh, I, we didn't get we didn't get to enough things, but uh, I've always been a big fan of yours. I reference two or three of your mixes every time I work. We've talked about it. I love I love the neo mix. I, I listen to that a lot. But if if you want to be uh, relevant in this industry, you got to pay attention to what Phil Tan's doing, and then you also got to try to avoid being on the same records with Phil because he will make you look better. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a very Where'd Phil go? Why am I on the camera? I want to see Phil. Because we're so... Oh, good. we already got it. Phil's gone. Can Phil hear me, I'm Will? Here. I'm here. Oh, oh, you there? Okay, we got technical, technical difficulties, but Phil, Hold thank on. you so much, man. And, uh, will you please come again real soon? And anytime you need me, so... Will you come back when that, 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 uh... The, the the movie the film that you were talking about when that's out can can you come back and give us a little I, I actually, explanation of that actually I just pulled some magic stuff Phil's gonna stay with us while we try to bring Charles in so oh okay hang in there so Phil stay okay. with us for a little bit longer if you would could you of course cool cool okay. so the guys are working out bringing Charles in and okay. hang around for a second okay. which by the way let's give a shout out to Yorg who you worked with this week Yorg yeah Yorg yeah, Yor Yor was cool he's back in England now yeah. right. You guys, uh, you took him out of the ATV and almost killed him. Apparently, I let him ride some <laughs> ATVs out at my studio. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think I got a number one record in England right now or something. Now, do you charge in addition to your mix fee for the ATV stuff and for the fun rides and the carnivals and the food and? Sure. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. Somebody's got to pay for that gas. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Particularly now. <laughs> Particularly now, no question about no, it. No, if, if it if it distracts anybody from listening to how bad my mix is, uh, it's, it's all a technique. It's <laughs> I see. I subterfuge. see. But it's not going well. Put them out into the hilly terrain. Subterfuge. Oh, I was hoping to get a four syllable in on you. But that's good. good. How are we doing? We got every, we ready yeah, yet? I, I I just did. You just did what? Can you not see me? Yeah. Go ahead, bro. I mean, go ahead, Phil. There we go. All awesome. right. All right, man. Applause for the technical staff Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Will and goodness. team. Will and team. Doing I like efforts. the clean shaven thing, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you with us, man. Glad to be here. Uh, so, man, uh, Phil, anytime, any, anytime you want to chime in, go ahead and chime in. We call this little segment uh, Batter's Box, where I kind of do some rapid fire stuff. And, um, Charles, you ready? I'm ready. All right, batter's box. Uh, I love your, uh, I love La Vida Loca. Uh, that was probably, or, or it was, I guess, the number one, the first in the box number one record, or was, uh, what's the distinction on that, Charles? I, I think that's the case, yeah. The first number one in the, the first, box. First, first. First number one mixed in the box, and, and, and it happened to also be recorded direct to the box as well. Oh, wow. And then your Aerosmith stuff, the J-Lo stuff, the Julio, I mean, on and on and on and on. You've got a pretty wide range of talents and skills. And then uh, to hear Phil talk about how much he's learned from you, that, that, that's, that's such a cool thing Thanks, that Phil. you're sharing all that experience. For our viewers, uh, there's a... There's a Charles is a very generous person with his information, just like Phil. He's got some, some great uh, archived Gear Sluts uh, appearances with our friend Jules Standen over at Gear Sluts. By the way, Jules uh, is going gonna, is gonna to be on the show. He's a good cat, too. Charles, let me, let me rapid fire some things to you, um, and then we'll talk a little bit about what you got going on. Um, just, just 
if you can just tell me your first, the first thing that pops into your head with regards to compression and EQ, it can be a plug-in, it can be outboard gear, it can be, just say next. I don't, I don't, I don't deal with that. I let my assistant mix those. That's what I do. Okay, so we'll start off with uh, with what you do on the mix bus, compression and EQ. Your first choice. We lost Charles. Phil, you want to take that? Compression and EQ in the mix bus? Yeah, first choice. First thing that comes to mind. Channel strip and SSL plug-in. Oh, good choice. Channel, channel strip for the EQ uh, and the SSL compressor for the compression. Okay. What about um, uh, bass? Channel strip. Metric halo. So okay. that's, that's the one I go to all the time. Okay. Lead vocal. Um, for compression, I would say the Renaissance comp, and for EQ, I'm going to say the Focusrite uh, D2. Oh, that's cool. And uh, have we got Charles back? Oh, I thought I saw Charles for um, a second there. I'm here. I don't know if you can see me. Oh, I see you now. Okay, let me just hey. go. Ahead, let me run these down real quick with uh, with Phil while we got a roll, and I'm going to come back to you, Charles. Okay. Uh, reverb. Just your general reverb, that you, your first choice. Any of the digi ones, actually. The Art Revive or Reverb one is fine, okay. too. Okay. I thought you were going to say TC. Ele uh, electric guitar. SSL channel strip. Cool. Live bass. Probably the Metric Halo channel strip. Okay. Round of applause for Phil, everybody. <laughs> Charles, you ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, stereo bus. Uh, tell me your first choice for compressor and EQ. Waves SSL. Uh, EQ. Uh, I'm not a big EQ on the bus guy, but uh, I do like to use a multiband, so that actually counts. So linear multiband waves as well. I'm going to stop this for a second. Um, when I'm asking the guys this, Herb, it's not fair because every song is different, every type of song is different, every genre is different. So I appreciate them playing along with this silly little game. But uh, I, I learn stuff from it, so I like it. When you need to uh, address the low end on a mix, what's your first go-to uh, EQ and compressor for fat or low end? For fat or low end? Um, I mean, I know, for, for my compression on bass, it's it's more utilitarian, but I'm always pretty happy with the sound of of either um, the Renaissance comp uh, or but that's not for the whole mix. That's just for the bass. Bass, yeah. And and but sometimes I'll also run a a, a mix of kick and snare and bass through um, a channel that might have an SSL comp that waves SSL comp or the you know, channel strip pro by uh, URS. Okay. And in a second, uh, Charles, I'll, I'd love for you to explain. Uh, some of your techniques for carving and getting this, the low end just right because you've got a really unique approach that I learned a lot by reading about. Your first choice for like saturation on a, on a stereo bus. Um, I, I was, I've, I've been listening along and uh, I, originally uh, my first choice was analog channel as well and, uh, and I've been primarily using either the um, saturation elements of uh, the Channel Strip Pro by URS or uh, the Waves SSL plug. Both of those sound different, but both of those provide a saturation I like. Okay, uh, lead vocal. Lead vocal, um, I'll use a multi-band comp uh, from Waves, not the linear multi-band, but the, uh, the, the, the one without so much delay. And then, of course, uh, totally love the sound of uh, Waves EQ. I'm sorry, at wait, the SSL EQ. You know, like the nice 10K SSL sizzle, um, and uh, okay. and then for compression, maybe uh, an LA2 style compressor from uh, the channel strip. Okay, uh, live bass. Live bass. Um, that's the one that I like to use Ren Comp on a lot, or uh, channel strip. Cool. Uh, one last one. Um, the three of us, we, we, we have a lot of sense, sense, and I know there's a wide variety. Um, for me, my go-to would be isotope. Is there a go-to chain that you like for synthesizers? 
Um, for, for, for me, mostly on the synths, um, I'm just, I'm trying to make, make the space because synths usually seem to be a lot bigger than the mix needs often. So oh. it'll be EQ to, uh, to, 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 to carve and make, make, bring it down to a size that I can use, then something to potentially make it wider. I think there's actually a trick I learned from an article that you were commenting on uh, oh. that uh, I've borrowed since then. Was it you that talked about uh, to, to, taking the channels and offsetting one channel? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love that trick. It's awesome. Oh, thanks, uh, some thanks. form of widening to open up the center. So thanks for sharing on that one. And, uh, you know, if, if compression is necessary, maybe, but I normally don't, uh, maybe some saturation, but still, I'm normally keeping it as clean and, and just trying to make get the garbage out that's unnecessary frequencies, low mids and, and potentially lows. Okay. One last one, acoustic guitar. Acoustic guitar. Oh, really liking the channel strip on that, but um, if I'm looking for more of a, of a, a edgier sound, I'd go with uh, the Waves SSL. Okay. Um, I was reading uh, on Gear Slut your technique for, for uh, we all get asked this a lot, your technique for for clearing the mud out of the bottom and having all the different elements that are that are existing down there below 200 coexist and 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 I I I, I want to start doing that. I, I wish I'd read that 20 years ago. Your your approach for that is really good. Where you first of all you mute the kick and the, the bass and then you then you can you describe that for us? I really yeah. like that, Charles. Yeah, and, and, and in reality, I mean, I was trying to clarify it for the person I was answering the question for, like, like, because I, I don't think I'm as methodical as I laid it out there. But, but, but what I laid out there was, if I've got some, if the mix is feeling over thick, over thick, like low mids, mm -hmm. or if the mix is feeling unclear in the lows, um, to me, and, and I mean, I should first establish that the low end I like is a really defined and clear low end for the most part. I'm not, there's a totally valid and other low end that's that, that's sort of flubby, washy kind of flood kind of thing, which, which works for some people, but it's not what I hear in my head and that I go for. I want clear, pure, uh, just punchy low end right. uh, uh, and, and not a lot of overlap. So the, the thing you're referring to is if things are sounding thick uh, in the low mids or th unclear in the bottom, I will, I'll mute my bass and mute any, you know, instruments that are designed to be adding low into the mix. And I'll listen for the things in the lows and in the low mids that are creating problems. Now, I've probably gone ahead anyway and at least taken off the bottom octave or so. Uh, so there's pro in every other instrument. The bottom the octave of what was left? Well, no, I mean, like, as I was going through the channels in the first place, I'm oh. probably not allowing a lot of 100 hertz okay. and down or 80 hertz and down uh -huh. in almost anything, except for the kick and the, and, 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 and the bass. Okay. But that doesn't mean that I don't have any low frequencies still slipping through. Uh -huh. So that's where I'll start listening for something that's creating a problem in the bottom or in the low mids. and and. To do that, I just I would go through and I probably have got one or two channels that I suspect right off the bat. Um, uh, some big culprits are are frequently synths, um, non-bass synths, um, acoustic guitars, uh, potentially electric guitars, um, um, pianos and uh, pianos and acoustic guitars are some of the biggest culprits for for robbing low end space uh, mm -hmm. in a mix. Um, but uh, just like a pad though. So anyway, once I find the instrument by muting it and then my, all of a sudden I've got a mix with a lot of space in it, I go back to that instrument and then work a little harder to, and, and, and it's not a wholesale just drop in a, a high pass filter and just start pulling it up because you can take a high pass filter and, and bring it up to friggin' 400 hertz if you want and mm -hmm. that might work on a pad, but for almost everything else, it's gonna really, uh, uh, you know, dwarf it. It's it's gonna it's gonna turn the instrument into something it's not designed to be. So at that point, you're probably looking at playing around with your shelf. You know that the the uh, the the angle of the shelf maybe it needs to be steeper, and then um, finding some low mid frequencies that you need to just dip. And and it might be subtle. You might bring the shelf up to 120, and then you might dip out 250, 200, a dB or two. You just pull back some of that thickness, and then once I've got 
got that that the mix feeling uncluttered in the low mids and lows bring back in the kick and bass and now they're they are the low end man incredible uh, did you pick that up drew I'm riding with you. What did he say? Right Repeat you. what he said. Word for word? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Charles. Man, that was great. I, I, when I read that, it, it, it had a lot of impact on me because I, I tend to do that with vocals, but I never thought about doing it with low-end information. And it's, 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 I don't want to call it a, a, a trick. It's a technique that, that's very useful in a, in, in a lot of different applications. Phil... Thanks. Charles, thanks man, you guys, thanks so much. I can't, I can't thanks, tell you how much I appreciate this. Both of you guys had to stop mixes to help me today, and I really appreciate it. Thank and you, guys. That's I owe you so anything I can do. I'm there for either one of you. And I uh, want to do this again. I had about ten more questions, but we just have, have, have run out of time. Uh, I've got a lot of questions I still want to ask. And... Um, from the bottom of my heart, and speaking for everybody here, thank you so much, guys. Absolutely. Thanks, thank guys. Thanks, guys. Great to see you. Thank you. Thanks. What's, thanks. What's great about Phil, Phil represents my homies in Atlanta, where I lived, and mm -hmm. Charles represents my homies in Miami, where I used to there live. You, you know, it's there like I got, I got you. every place. Every place. <laughs> and Drew and I represent what? Uh, Very nice. I know that's <laughs> <laughs> Don't even go there. <laughs> Before we go, make sure, again, you do our homework. Let's get to our Twitter handle and email Dave or email myself or email Drew at Pensado's Place at ThisWeekend.com. You see the stuff up on the screen. You know the drill. Uh, thanks for coming. We uh, love having you. And Dave, get us out. Man, I tell you what, guys. We're so blessed to be able to get information from cats like uh, Bruce Wadeen and and Phil and Charles and, and the other 14 episodes that we've had. It's, it's humbling, isn't it, Herb? Yeah, it's we've, it's we've done 16 episodes, and we want to thank you uh, for allowing us to do this. This, is, this show exists because Herb and I just have so much fun doing it, so it's your obligation to make sure we continue to have fun, and we'll, we'll continue to, to bring you the best that we can bring you. So appreciate the cards and letters, and we'll talk to you next week. See you guys. Thanks.